Hello, I'm Curran, and uh, today we'll talk about GitHub and GitHub pages. So this screencast covers Git, what is Git, what it's all about, uh, GitHub, what is it, and GitHub pages. So the idea is you'll be able to publish your own websites for free with GitHub pages. So first of all, Git. Git is a revision control system. You can think about it kind of like Dropbox, but for source code, for collaboratively editing source code. So Git uh, has a long history. Um, it tracks your changes and the changes other people make to a bunch of source code. So Git is the latest of this long string of systems called revision control systems. And this article is kind of interesting. Uh, CVS was one of the first, and then SVN, uh, Mercurial is another one. But Git is uh, kind of the most popular one today, uh, at least for open source projects. So GitHub is a company that deals with hosting Git repositories. Here you see the GitHub homepage. So GitHub, here's the uh, interface. You need to sign in to use it. Uh, so it's a company, they make money, but it's free to make open source projects. So go ahead and sign up, uh, get your GitHub username, and then sign in. So here's what it looks like when you're signed in. You get a URL too, github.com slash your username. So GitHub is really popular today, especially for open source projects. You know, most open source projects uh, are hosted on GitHub. And GitHub is also a way for you to share your code with the world. So if you're just starting out programming, maybe you're a student, um, creating a GitHub account is a really good idea because uh, that's where people look when they want to see, when they want to find out, you know, what, what kind of quality code does this person write? So if you go to the repositories tab in your GitHub view, there's a button here that says new. Uh, so you can click this to create a new repository. So here you see the interface to create the repository you can give it a name, say, my uh, site. Oh, that already exists. So, okay, my uh, page. So here you can enter in a description, my example page, say. Uh, and if you make it public on GitHub, it doesn't cost you anything, and it will remain there indefinitely. Uh, anyone can see the contents. So this is great for public projects. If you want to make something private on GitHub, you need to pay GitHub money. Uh, this is their business model. So let's make it public. Check this box here that says initialize this repository with a readme. This means that there will be a file already there in the repository when you start working with it. So this makes things easier because you don't need to uh, initialize the Git repository yourself. So you could add a .gitignore. This will ignore certain files that are uh, that are created by different systems but really shouldn't be in the uh, source control system like installed packages for example. You can add a license here. One of the most common open source licenses is the MIT license. That means people can use it in commercial products but if you choose GPL that means people can't use it in commercial products. So we're not going to add a license or a gitignore. Let's create the repository and this is what we get. This newly created uh, repository view. So there's one file in it, readme.md. If you click the file, it renders uh, this markdown page as HTML. So here we see the home page for this newly created repository. And notice here that you have this URL in a box. In order to use the Git repository, what you need to do is clone it. You need to make a copy of this repository, which is pretty much a directory with files in it, you need to copy it from GitHub to your local machine, your local computer where you're sitting. And then you change the files there, and then you push those changes up to GitHub. And when other people make changes to GitHub, you pull them down to get your changes. The, these are the notions of push and pull in Git. So when you start using Git, you may be inclined to try to use one of these GUI clients. And some of them are really nice, you know, but they're all different and kind of hard to predict uh, some of them cost money. So I would recommend not using a GUI client for Git. It's not really the best way to go. Uh, I would recommend instead use the Git command line tool. The way you install the Git command line tool depends on your operating system. So just uh, go here, work through this, install it on your system. 
I'm not going to cover that, but uh, it's doable. Just get it done. Then you'll have Git available to use. You can clone this repository using HTTPS, SSH, or Subversion. So these are just different protocols you can use. Let's use SSH. So copy this URL here. Open up a terminal. When you clone a Git repository, you need to put it on your system somewhere. So I have this directory called repos that contains all my repositories. Uh, that's just my preference. You can put it anywhere on your system. But wherever you execute the git command, the git clone command, it will create a directory in the directory that you're in right now. So let's type git clone and then paste that URL that was copied from the GitHub page. So it's cloning into my page, but the permission is denied. So here's one kind of a tricky thing with uh, Git and GitHub. You need to create uh, SSH keys on your system. So if you just do a quick Google search for GitHub SSH keys, you get this page generating SSH keys. And this has some instructions you can follow in order to uh, generate these SSH keys. So the idea is SSH is used for security uh, with GitHub. So you need to set up a SSH key, you know, just for to get it to work. I don't know why. So the reason why you need to create an SSH key to use GitHub with the SSH protocol is because SSH uses public key cryptography to authenticate. So that means you need to uh, generate a key on your machine, uh, generate a public-private key pair, uh, and then use the SSH scheme to uh, to encrypt the network connection. So this is why GitHub is secure. So here's how we do it. So let's just go ahead and follow these instructions. So step one, check for SSH keys. Uh, we need to see if there's already SSH keys on my computer. So in the terminal, copy and paste that command. So this lists the files in the SS .ssh directory in your home directory. And uh, it says, look for these files, idrsa.pub or id underscore rsa.pub. Um, so we don't have those, so let's go to step two. Generate a new SSH key. So here, what we'll do is copy and paste this command into the terminal, and then replace my this email with uh, my email, or put your email in. So this is the default file, just hit enter, and then a passphrase, you'll have to enter this later. Okay, it needs to be a certain length. Okay, so it's generated this uh, public-private key pair. So now if we list the files in the .ssh directory again, we see we have these two new files. The next step is to add this SSH key to GitHub. So pbcopy will copy the content of this file to the clipboard in the Mac. Uh, however you need to get that done, go ahead, like open it in a text editor and copy it or whatever. But I'll execute this command. So now it's been copied to the clipboard. So after copying the key to the clipboard, we need to uh, use the GitHub user interface and follow these steps. So on any page, click this gear. So here we click the gear settings, click SSH keys in the left sidebar, click add SSH key over here, and then give it a name. So this is my laptop. So the name could be anything. And then just paste that key right in here, and then click Add Key, and then type your GitHub password if it asks for it. So now the key is listed there in your SSH keys. So the last step is to test everything out. So let's copy and paste this command into the terminal. This will just test the connection, and then enter that password that you entered before on the key, and then uh, it says, OK, it worked. Great. And uh, it may prompt you further, and just uh, type yes if, it, if you see this. So here we go. We are uh, all set. So let's try to clone the URL again. So we're in the repos directory. If we type git clone, and again, from the repository page, copy this URL, make sure it says SSH, you can change the protocol when you click, paste that in here, and then now it's cloned. 
so now you can see that the uh, my page directory is here and let's move into that directory and see what's there okay we have a readme file so we can actually edit the file it's the file that was automatically created by github uh, with the repository name and the description that you entered so let's change the file let's say uh, this page was created for the screencast introduction to github so let's save the file close it and now we can type git status Git status will tell you what has changed. So it, it'll tell you that the readme.md file is modified. And there are a lot of other details there. To just show a shorter version without those details, you can type git status s. And this will just tell you what you need to know that the readme file has changed. So with git, you need to um, add this file git add readme.md. This will add the file to the set of files that will be added to the repository when you commit next. So the flow in git is you add a bunch of files that you've changed and then you type git commit dash m with a quoted string that is your message. So the message of a github commit is really important. It tells git, it logs into the system what this commit is all about, but it should be brief. You know, so just type something like modified readme or updated readme.md so now uh, it's committed but your name and email address were configured automatically so this happens when you first try to use git uh, when you first set up git on your system you need to tell git what your user and email is so it can associate that with your commits so here's how to do that just copy and paste this command from here and then change your name to your name which is uh, well my name is Curran and then do the same for the second line configure your email and now let's try that command again git commit dash m updated readme okay no complaint about the name so it says okay great uh, our branch is now ahead of origin slash master by one commit. So origin here refers to GitHub, the fact that it's uh, the origin, like where it came from. This is the name of this location where the GitHub repository is. And then master is the branch name. Master is the main branch that gets automatically created. So now if we type git status dash s, it says, well, there's no status. Everything's been committed. So now we've committed the changes locally on our machine, but to get that up to GitHub, we need to push these changes to GitHub. So to do that, we type git push and hit enter. And now it says, well, it worked. So now let's go back to the GitHub interface, refresh the page, and then we see that the readme was updated. So, wow, now it's been updated, great. So GitHub is uh, used a lot in collaborative settings, you know, f so people can work in teams. It's not just one person working on the code, but, you know, one person starts it, another person makes a change, and then a whole team of people work together on a project for months. So that's what GitHub is really good at. So to simulate somebody else working on this project, let's edit the file from the GitHub web interface. So to do that, click on the readme.md file, and then click on this pencil, and it will give you a text editor in the page that you can use. So what I want to do is I want to link this screencast introduction to GitHub to this page that I've created over here for the for the screencast. In order to do that, I'll copy this URL and then paste it into a link syntax in the markdown file. So markdown is a nice language you can use to author HTML pages. So if you search for Markdown and you get this page, this is the uh, overview of the syntax of Markdown. GitHub uses Markdown, this convention of a readme.md file. That's the readme for the project. So that's like a description of the project, uh, maybe some bullets uh, and some different sections, uh, you know, and documentation for the project. A lot of project documentation is written in Markdown and put in the readme file for open source projects. So the link syntax is square brackets. We're going to add 
one square bracket in the beginning and then another square bracket at the end and then a set of parentheses and see it's red now because github the syntax highlighted editor knows uh, that it's a link syntax and we paste the url here and then we can scroll down and click commit changes this will commit the changes uh, it'll say modified readme so now if we go to the my page uh, page it says there have been three commits here's the initial commit here's the updated readme.md commit from when I had not yet configured my username and then here's the update that I just made in the web interface so if we go back to the terminal and we type git log it will tell us the recent commits that have been run on this repository so this is my local machine there have been two commits and on the remote repository there have been three commits that means that the remote repository is ahead of the local repository by one commit so in order to get this new commit we need to pull this new commit down from github to our local machine so if we type git pull it does some work and it says well one file has changed so now if we type git log, first if we type clear to clear the console and then git log, it tells us there have been three commits. And if we look at this readme file, we can see that it's been changed. This update that we made in the web interface is now reflected in the local file. So that's basically how you can use Git and GitHub for your day-to-day -day workflow of changing files, adding them, pushing them, pulling them, and so on. But GitHub has another really great feature called GitHub Pages. It will publish pages for you to the public web based on your GitHub repository content. So pages.github.com is like the page for GitHub Pages. It has some instructions here for users or organization sites. And then if you click Project Site, it tells you this list of steps. It has this automatic generator for pages, but I prefer not to use that because you can just put whatever files you want in a repository and then change its branch name to GH Pages, and then GitHub will publish it as a website. So here's how we can do that. So if you scroll down on this README page for the screencast, there's a little list of commands that I put together for using GitHub Pages. So you need to first make a new branch called GH Pages. So you can type git branch gh pages to create the branch. Let's do that in the terminal. Now, if you type git branch, it will tell you there's now two branches, but the currently checked out branch is master. When a branch is checked out with git, uh, that means that you see those files on your file system. And there's a hidden file that has the git content of other branches and when you check out a branch the content comes from that store into your file system so right now we're looking at files on the master branch but if we want to look at files on the GH pages branch we can change branches by typing git check out the branch name GH pages switch to branch GH pages so now if we type git branch again it says GH pages is checked out and if we check out the files uh, it's all the same as it was before because uh, it makes a copy of the current branch that you're on but if you modify that other branch the first branch doesn't change that's why it's called like branching branching the tree of different versions of the project so that's one syntax one way to create a new branch and check it out but there's actually a shorter way to do it and this is the more convenient way you can just type git checkout dash b the name of the branch github pages this will create and check out a branch. So we've created this branch on our machine locally and to push that to GitHub we need to issue another command git push. So we ran git push before and when you just type git push what that actually does is it executes this git push origin master or whatever branch you're currently on. Origin means GitHub master is the name of the branch so it pushes this branch to the origin but if you want to push a different branch like GH pages uh, we need to use this full form and then change the branch name 
So we can type in the console git push origin master, but we want to push the gh-pages branch instead. So we hit enter and it seems to have worked. So now when we go to our page, the repository page in GitHub, and we refresh the page, it lists those two branches here. So now we're looking at the master branch, and then we can change the, we can look here at the GitHub pages branch. So now that we've pushed this branch to GitHub, GitHub pages will kick in and start working. Uh, what GitHub pages does is it takes the content of this repository and it serves all these files statically using HTTP. It's a typical web server, just like Apache or whatever. So if you go into the settings panel of your repository and scroll down, it'll say your site is published at this URL. So if you click this URL, it says there isn't a page there, but keep in mind this just publishes whatever's in your repository. This looks for index.html, which is not there. But if we type readme.md and hit enter, it will render. And this is the readme.md file, it's just a text file. So let's add an index.html now. So we have a home page that will get rendered. So I like to use JSBin as a rapid prototyping tool. It's really nice. It lets you uh, just type some HTML and uh, this page renders on the right as you type. It's a really nice tool. So this is our basic HTML page. Uh, let's change the title to uh, my page. So I'm going to copy and paste this into my editor. I'm going to edit the file index.html. This is how you paste in Vim in the Mac. Um, I'd like to indent the file properly. And then, uh, and then I'll add a little bit of uh, comments just to show like what is this file and who wrote it. Uh, that's like kind of a best practice to put in your files. So there's my comments as a ha sample homepage, blah, 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 by me this date. So I'll save the file. And if we type git status dash s, it tells us that there's a file there that hasn't been added yet. So let's type git add index.html. Now if we type git status, it says that index.html has been added. That's what A means. And then let's commit this file. git commit dash m created index.html. And then git push to push this change up to GitHub. And then if we load this URL, without the slash readme, it should load the index page and it does. Hello world. So now you have a publicly published website using GitHub pages for free. So you can add files here, images, other HTML files, you know, whatever. And uh, GitHub will continue publishing your site at this URL indefinitely for free. So that's how you do it. So at this point, the website is working, but there are a few little things that are nice to do after this. So here's these branches. If we refresh the page, we're on the master branch. There's no index.html, but on the GH pages branch, we have an index.html. And notice that when you go to this page, it automatically goes to the master branch. What I'd like to do is really only use the GH pages branch and not use the master branch at all. So to do this, GitHub has the notion of a uh, default branch. So if we go into the settings, we can change the default branch to GH pages. And if we do that, when we go to this page, now it loads the GH pages branch automatically as the main branch. But there's still some stuff in the master branch. So if we check out the master branch, git checkout master, there's a readme file and I'm just gonna change this readme file to say uh, everything's in the GH pages branch just so people don't get confused and if you add a dash a to the end of git commit it automatically adds all the files that have been changed to this commit so it says okay readme has been changed let's push this up to github so now if we look at the master branch 
it says everything's in the GH pages branch. So if we go there, everything's here. Another good thing to do is to link back and forth between the site and the GitHub repository. So the, the GitHub repository can link to the page and the page can link back to the GitHub repository. So let's first link the GitHub repository to the page. So if we click edit here, we can add a website for this page. And we can type this URL into there and hit save. So now if, if you just give someone this link, they can easily find out this other link to go to the page that's published. So often to link to a GitHub repository, people use these GitHub banners, which are, I think, pretty nice. It's really nice. So here's how to use those. So just do a Google search for uh, GitHub ribbons. And then you can just copy and paste this code into your page. So pick the color and the orientation you want. And then you can just paste this right into the page. So here we're in my page, git branch. You see we're in the master branch. Let's go back to the GH pages branch. Git checkout, GH pages. So now we're in the GH pages branch. We see these files. And let's open up index.html and then just put that thing into our page. So now it's there at the end of the body. And now we just need to change this link to point to our page. Go to your repository page and copy this URL and then paste it there. Save the file. Oh, actually, we should put where we got this thing. So I'll save the file. Git status dash s tells us that this file's been changed. Git commit dash m added github ribbon dash a to automatically add that changed file to the change set and then git push to push it up to github and now if, if we look at this page it has this ribbon on it so we can click here and then we can click here and see they link to each other now so now you could just uh, have a ball, you know, making your website, making it really nice. Let's just do one pass of that flow you, so you can see what it's like. So let's edit the index.html file. And uh, let's make this hello world into a h1 tag. This will just make it big. So let's save this file. And then let's add a JavaScript file, say. So we'll add a script tag that points to a specific uh, JavaScript file, let's say main.js, colon sp will split the vim window and make a new file main.js, and let's just type console.log hello. So let's write the files and then get status will tell us the files that have changed. So usually you do a lot of development, you make a bunch of files and you want to add all of them. One convenient way to do that is just to type git add dot. This will add all the files in your current directory. So now if we type git status again, it'll tell us this is the state of things. And let's now commit these files. Made title h1 added a JavaScript file. We don't need the dash A because we've already added them here. Just hit enter and then git push to push this to GitHub. And now if we refresh the page, this is bigger. And also if we see the JavaScript terminal by clicking here, going to tools, JavaScript console, we can see that that JavaScript file ran and it printed out hello. So now if you go back to the GitHub repository page, you can see that there have been six commits. And if we click on the six commits, now we see a nice history of all the stuff that's been done. And as John Riesig says, the creator of jQuery, when it comes to hiring, I'll take a GitHub commit log over a resume any day. So that's how you can use Git 
GitHub and GitHub pages to publish your own website for free. Uh, good luck. Take care.